Now, we're going to go into our third phase. We've had the goal. We've had winning. And I want to share with you what I believe ties these two elements together. Perhaps the most revolutionary concept the Bible talks about, your audience. Who is your audience as an athlete? I know for most of you, it's going to be your coach. In practices, you want to please your coach. For some of you, it'll be your girlfriend or boyfriend who's coming out to watch you practice. For a lot of you in the competition itself, it's going to be the people in the stands. Those, I mean, they're the audience. They're there. But that's not the audience that, that God himself gives us. I remember when I was back in a high school playing football, uh, I, I, there were certain drills in, in football practice I really didn't like a whole lot. And, and I knew that on this particular Friday, uh, Thursday, we were going to have to go through some of these drills. And not, a heavy, not a heavy workout, but go through some of the drills. And uh, my pastor, Kenny Olson, who I just idolized at that time, he was a young athlete, Golden Gloves fighter, and uh, football player, college football player. And he kind of took me under his wing. My dad died when I was nine years old, so Kenny was kind of like a big brother to me. He was six years, eight years older than I was. And he told me, Wes, I'm going to come and watch you practice on Thursday. I couldn't wait for him to come through those gates and to see me practice. I was at this time, I was a running back, but at this time I was also playing defensive back. And on this particular time when Kenny came through the gates, I was defensive back, and the guy who I did not like to tackle, and the reason I didn't like to tackle, he was like going full steam against a brick wall and just the, ball, the wall doesn't budge. And his name was Joe Doolittle, and he took that ball and he, he just loved coming at me. He had a kind of a grin on his face when he did it. And uh, he came around and I saw Kenny on the sideline and I thought, Joe is going down. Didn't know how, but he had to go down because I wanted to be looking good for Kenny. And so I dove in with every ounce of energy I had. It was like Humpty Dumpty smashing the wall. And I crumbled down, but I held on to Joe and brought him down. When Joe came down, his knee hit my stomach. And everything was knocked out of me. And I got up eventually, and I went back to my uh, defensive huddle, and my thought was, don't give Joe the ball again. But then I heard Kenny's voice. Kenny's voice bellowed out, and he said, way to tackle Wes, way to hit him. Well, I knew who hit who. And it wasn't, I was a hitty, not the hit or. But Kenny's voice is all I needed. I was ready for Joe the next time again. And I discovered then the importance of having an audience that you truly respect, truly care about, truly want to perform for. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus gives us a tremendous promise. Matthew 28, 20. He said, listen up. That's what the word low means in the Bible. Low. Listen up. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I am with you. I'll be with you. I'll be there with you. Peter, even though you can see me now and later on you can't see me, I'm going to be with you as real in spirit as I was physically for you here. I'll be with you. What an audience we have. Jesus himself is praying. Folks, this, is a, this will shake you up a little bit if you really think about it. Jesus is in the room now. He's present. He's with you. He's with me. He's with every one of his followers at the same time because he's spiritually with us, but as real as if he were physically with us. He speaks to us through his words out of the Bible. He speaks to our mind. He speaks to our heart. He's with us. Former Secretary of Defense William Cohen was quite a basketball player in high school. And he said that he, he discovered how to practice in the presence of his father, even though his father wasn't physically on the court. And what happened one day, his father was one of these very vocal dads. He'd come to the basketball practice and tell the coach what he ought to be doing and tell every player what he ought to be doing and, and tell Bill what he ought to be doing and just kind of made a nuisance of himself. But he loved Bill and he loved basketball. 
Finally, the coach came up to Bill Cohen one day and he said, Bill, you've got to keep your dad from coming to the practices. He's just too disturbing. He's, he's distracting. And so Bill very diplomatically shared this with his father. And uh, when he did, his father understood and he said, son, I won't go any more practices, but I'll be at the games. You can depend on that, but I won't come to your practices inside at all. Key word, inside. And so Bill, in one practice, it was a snowy day outside, was dribbling the ball, and all of a sudden he had this eerie feeling that he's being watched by someone not present. And he stopped, and he glanced, and he didn't look squarely at the window, but glanced, and he got a glimpse of his father outside the window, standing on the rail with snow coming down, falling off his face, his head, watching his son play basketball, practice basketball. Bill said he never told his father that he saw him there because he never wanted to discourage his father from coming. But he said, even the days that I couldn't see him, I knew he was there. And I practiced every game as if he were there coaching me and pulling for me all the way. Folks, that's what it is to be aware of the presence of Jesus Christ. To train yourself, to train your mind as you train your body to mentally be aware of the presence of Jesus. Think about that right now. Try to do that. Think of Jesus physically being here next to you right now. Mentally picture the awareness and be aware of Jesus himself. Now here's one way to do this. Here's one way to be aware of his presence. I want you right now to pretend you're looking at yourself in a mirror. And in the mirror, you see your physical self. You can't see your spiritual self. You can't see your mental self. You just see who you see, yourself in the mirror. But I want you, to, as you're looking at yourself in the mirror, to know that inside of you, inside of you, inside of your mind, inside of your body, is the spirit of Jesus himself. You are not alone. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you're looking at the dwelling place of Jesus, of his spirit. In Romans 8 9, it says that the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of Christ, dwells in every one of his followers. That's you. And that's me. Be aware that Jesus is present in you. And he's with you. I believe, that at least this is what I've discovered in my life, how I am aware more of his presence. I talk with him. I talk with him. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it tells us to pray without ceasing. Pray continually. Keep on. You know what that means? It doesn't mean that you're, uh, hello, hello, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It doesn't mean you just keep talking. Like you can't talk to someone else if you're just doing that. The word without intermission or continually means like you have a hacking cough. How many of you, you've all had hacking coughs. And when you cough, you go, <coughs> and there's a pause. And then, <coughs> and a pause. <coughs> And a pause. You don't go, <laughs> you die. You can't do it. Praying continually means you're praying with these little intermissions, just like little breaks, but with no major intermission, no major stoppage. I could be talking to my wife, and as soon as I'm talking to my wife, I'm talking to the Lord. When you're in a workout, you're saying, Lord, here comes this stinking drill again. I hate it, but I'm going to depend on you to get me through this drill and to have a great attitude in doing the drill. I'm going to listen to what my coach tells me to do. I'm going to follow the instructions, but, but Lord, it's going to be, have to be you doing it through me because I just don't have the desire for it right now. Put the desire in me and let's go at it. You talk with the Lord. That's how you become aware of his presence. You pray continually as Paul gave us the instructions to do. Now, Several years ago, I was at uh, Lincoln Christian High School in Lincoln, gave a seminar on total release several years ago, and two girls, we took a break. Two runners decided, I'm going to go out, we're going to go out and actually practice the presence of Jesus. We're going to be mentally aware that Jesus is our audience, and it was just a routine run. It was just a boring course that they went on, nothing exciting about it. They came back and they said, we can't believe our experience. 
to be mentally aware that Jesus was striding alongside of us and he was encouraging us. What, a, what an experience that was. And they couldn't wait to share that with the rest of the, the conferees. What I'm saying is this. When you go out in competition now, you can know that your goal is to represent Jesus. Be committed to that. You can know that winning is the total release of all that you are toward representing Jesus. Be committed to that. And you might even, at the end of one drill, say, well, how did I measure up to what Jesus uh, would be doing right now? You give yourself maybe a seven on a 10-point scale. You figure out what a 10 is, perfection, that's Jesus. You give yourself a seven. All you have to do is ask, what one thing can I do on the next drill to raise that up to an eight in representing Jesus? But be aware of the presence of Jesus. He's your audience. That's going to be tough because you're going to be wanting to please Coach Brown. You're going to be wanting to please some of your counselors, some of the staff here. You're going to be wanting to please other people. You're going to have this battle on. When that comes, say, Lord, my mind is drifting right now. Help me be aware of you as my only audience. I want to see you as my only audience. When you put these three principles together, the goal, winning, and audience, you can see an immediate, and you're going to experience an immediate improvement in your sports. I don't have to guarantee it. I'm a human. I don't have to guarantee it. God guarantees it. God guarantees it. God's way, man's way. Man's way, God's way. It will always be your choice, and it will always be your biggest and toughest competition. The real battle is getting in God's arena, doing it His way, relying on Him. Start it in this next hour. Start it. And tomorrow when we come back here for, in the chapel, we're going to talk about how you can be motivated all the time, how you, how you can have this fire burning in you when you don't really feel like doing something how it can happen, how God can make it happen in you. Goal today, winning today, audience today. The thing that ties the goal and the winning together is you being aware that Jesus really is with you, not in theory, in reality.